Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. A former Detroit police officer slapped with two lawsuits. What Jeffrey Figer says happened in this video and how the chief is responding. A major shooting investigation unfolding here in Taylor on this quiet street. We'll show you what happened. All right, Sean, but we're going to begin with the weather, and it's not a joke. Snow is on the way for this weekend, but before that happens, some activity on 4 Live Radar is starting to pop up right now. About it. Ben Bailey has uh, been a busy guy today. we got snow on the uh, late in the later first last week of April, but let's go in order with what you're seeing right now. Ben. Yeah, there's showers out there and we have had some rumbles of thunder, but more importantly, these showers, even though they have been just rain in a lot of spots, have been pulling down some winds. Look at the wind gusts that we'll show you here in a minute, uh, but you can see here just in the last 20 to 30 minutes, that's a pretty robust uh, shower that ran through Romulus there and it's way out towards the lake. Here are the wind gusts in the last 24 hours and most of these high numbers have been within the hour. 53 miles an hour is what we clocked in Pontiac as some of those showers and storms moved right over uh, the central part of Oakland County. So be aware that some of these wind gusts uh, could be get, approaching those numbers until these showers exit. So here's the weather story. The storms will be fading tonight. It's going to be a freezing start to tomorrow morning. We're going to look at that in your four zone forecast and well, that's what we said on Sunday. You know what the story is. Then we will talk amounts and locations of the S word all coming up in a few minutes, guys. Okay, Ben, our other top story tonight, a former Detroit police officer is facing two new lawsuits, one of them involving allegations of police brutality. Attorney Jeffrey Figer showed this video today purporting to show ex-officer Gary Steele breaking a woman's arm during an arrest in May of last year. We bring in Larry Spruill. Uh, Larry, this is in addition now to the suit over Steele's uh, posts on Snapchat that were racist. Yeah, good evening, Devin and Kimberly. We have both lawsuits. This lawsuit talks about the Snapchat video. This second lawsuit dates back to May of 2018. It says that Officer Steele allegedly arrested a black woman and then broke her arm, and it was all caught on camera. You don't okay. have to get all physical. It's round two of the former Detroit police officer Gary Steele's soap opera. You can see Steele in this video, allegedly recorded on May 31st, 2018. Steele is accused of breaking Elaine Mariel's arm while trying to arrest her after she got into an argument with the girlfriend of her son's father. Attorney Jeffrey Figer tells me officers arrived and handled the situation. He says former officer Gary Steele showed up later. He allegedly arrested his client and broke her arm in the process. Elaine's arm was fractured. Fractured. She has uh, had an operation. Almost a year later, Figer and his team of attorneys are suing the city of Detroit and former officer Gary Steele for his involvement in this case in the infamous Snapchat video, showing Steele using racial slurs to describe his client, Ariel Moore. What happened here is a gross violation of not only the state civil rights and negligence as we've alleged in these complaints. In a news conference Friday morning, Figer released both lawsuits. Moore is suing for $75,000, while Mario is suing for $25,000. When it costs them money, then they start making changes. And that's the purpose of these lawsuits. Friday, Chief James Craig addressed the lawsuits. We are aware of it. Uh, as you know, as it relates to the first lawsuit, uh, we've conducted an internal investigation and both officers were terminated as it relates to the second issue that's being investigated by our internal affairs. And also attorney Figer did claim that DPD and Chief Craig knew about the second lawsuit from 2018 but decided to hide it and throw it under the rug. We did ask Chief Craig about those claims. He tells me it's not true. We're live at headquarters tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, folks who live on a quiet dead end street in Taylor say nothing like this has ever happened before. But it did happen this morning when a man was shot multiple times and then the shooter took off. Sean Lay spoke to neighbors today who are shaken to their core. We're on McGuire, just south of 94 here in Taylor. You can see the shooting investigation unfolding on this quiet street. Right over there is a young mom named Jessica. She's still shaken up. She heard the shots. She saw the victim. She had to tell her four year old to go run and hide. Oh boy, um, don't mind me, I'm shaking a little bit. Jessica Belden says her motherly instincts kicked in when 
five to six shots rocked her quiet Taylor Street. She turned to her four year old son Daniel and told him to hide. I said, go in mommy's room, go in your room, go, go. You need to, you know, go hide because I didn't know what was happening. It happened on McGuire Street south of 94, a dead end where everyone here knows each other. But today I wanted to cry. I really did because in I've lived here since 2006 and I live with my stepdad and I've never nothing like this has ever happened before. There's nothing random about what happened. Jessica saw the shooting victim bleeding in the street. Then she saw her neighbor speed off in his red SUV. I thought the car was going to hit him for a minute because the way it looked, but he kind of like swerved and he just came out this way and went that way. Didn't even stop. Taylor police went over every inch of this neighborhood looking for clues, escorting scared moms and their kids back to their homes. This mom making sure her son wouldn't be hit by gunshots. I told him, I said, you need to go, go mommy's room, go mommy's room. And he's just like, why mommy? Why? And I said, no, you just, just go <laughs> as it left my side since. And little Daniel has not left his mom's side all day long there. This was such a uh, shocking event, scary event for so many neighbors there. We told you it was not uh, a random crime here, guys. Taylor police uh, say they're investigating this as a love triangle. The man shot, shot five times. He's now coming out of surgery at this hour. We're told he should survive. They're still looking for that gunman in that red or maroon SUV tonight. We're live tonight. Sean Lake, Local 4. All right, Sean, a deadly shooting in Inkster has police on the lookout there tonight. One man was shot dead early this morning. It happened at Duran Court near Middle Belt and Annapolis. Michigan State Police say they don't know what led to the shooting, and they're still looking for the suspect who ran from the scene. Police say a 61-year-old Detroit woman stopped a man from stealing her car early this morning by shooting him. It happened on Coyle Street near Finkel and Greenfield. Police say during a fight between the two, she pulled a gun and fired. Tonight, our Nick Monticelli is asking an important question. Will she face charges? Good evening. I want to set the stage for you on exactly how all of this played out. The homeowner, 61 years old, living in this home right behind me. The SUV that would have been stolen was right here. In fact, you can still see some of the glass left over from the shooting, but where the actual shooting happened could become the problem. It was about 2.30 this morning when the 61-year-old woman living here heard noises, went outside, and found a 49-year-old man trying to steal her SUV. Police say they got into a physical fight and she shot him. At last check, he is in temporary serious condition. But as former Detroit Lieutenant Tom Barry explains, there is a gray area here because she didn't have a CPL and you cannot shoot somebody for stealing a car. But if you confront the defendant, and the defendant says, hey, I'm going to kick your butt. I'm going to kill you if you don't get away from me. What is in your mind? It's what's in your mind. And if what's in your mind is the thought that you could be hurt or killed, self-defense is allowed. And she felt in fear of her life, an imminent danger it's called. She has the right to use whatever force is necessary. Another possible issue, Michigan has the stand your ground law, allowing us to protect ourselves and property, but on our property. The shooting was on the public street. Bottom line, every expert will tell you do not confront a suspect. Call 911. So I got to give her some accolades there for doing that, but but it's the wrong thing to do. What if he took that gun and killed her? Is it worth it? And the answer is no, it's not worth it. Your life is not worth anything like this. Property is replaceable. Your life is not. Now, I did talk to the detective that was out here this morning working on the case. She did say that, like you heard, they're going to take this entire thing and just give it to the prosecutors and let them make all the decisions. On Detroit's West Side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Okay, Nick, now to the newest member of the Pride, Lions first round pick tied in TJ Hawkinson, getting a big introduction today as he made his debut in Allen Park. Yeah, Bertie's here with us now. Uh, so far, he's saying all the right things. Well, they always do on day one. You know that, of course. <laughs> well, if TJ Hawkinson, he was one of those guys the Lions really wanted. 6'5", 250, can be a huge weapon in the Lions offense. We've got highlights of Hawkinson introduced at the press conference in Allen Park this afternoon. Lions feel he can contribute immediately. And with Jesse James, the other tight end, who they signed, the tight end position is solid. And Hawkinson says he's just happy for the chance to contribute. I also want to thank this organization. You know, there's so many people that, uh, you know, have a, to just give me the opportunity to be here and, and to be able to play this great game for a living um, is super exciting. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to diving into the playbook and, and working hard and, you know, helping this team in whatever way I can.
You're right. Said everything exactly right. Don't forget the NFL draft continues tonight, seven o'clock rounds two and three. We're back later with more on TJ Hawkinson plus a mind blowing contract for Clemson's Dabo Sweeney. Hey, yes. Yeah. It's funny with Hawkinson, he, he's from Iowa, but he says he sounds like a hockey guy. Yeah, organization. organization. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We had right. to look up where he was from to make sure he <laughs> yeah. wasn't Canadian or something. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of the Lions, we got a really good news update on Kelly. Oh, Stab. this is great. Yeah. In, in the post to Instagram in the past hour, Kelly announced she's back home from the hospital and even better yet, was well enough to spend time with her little girls. That's something she said she's been unable to do since her brain surgery. Says time with them is giving her inspiration to keep on pushing. And we wish her all the best. Great so picture, cute, too. Yeah. Yep. We're off and running on a Friday. Now to defender Kevin Dietz. He's a retired federal agent with one final case to solve. A triple murder from 35 years ago. One of the victims was his brother. The story is coming up. A mom is determined to find her son's killer to the point that she's doing her own detective work. But I'm not going anywhere because this is just the beginning. We'll tell you more about her fight for justice coming up. But first, police believe there was just one driver responsible for this, a horrifying 24-car crash. Next. <laughs> 